Hello again, it's Jimmy here already. So I have here behind me a Volvo. I think it's an XC70, is it? But anyway, regardless, it's a Volvo 2.4 diesel, and it's had a DPF clean, and it's had forced regens. And obviously, the guy's been looking at my my videos. He's been looking at what the pressures should be, and he said after the cleans and after the forced regens, pressure has actually increased. So that would kind of almost say to me straight away that this DPF is either damaged or it's full of ash so what we're gonna do is we've just had a quick chat with a customer here I've just had a little look at live data and I'm we've agreed that the only way to actually verify what's going on here is to actually remove the DPF we can try to back flush it on our machine we've got a machine in the back of our van here that we can use to back flush the DPF we can try to back flush it and see what the pressure comes out to afterwards obviously it, it, we can't guarantee what the results will be until we try it put it back on we can get a good idea by when we remove the DPF um, some of the concerns for me would be are we getting oil into the DPF are we um, have we got a cracked DPF have we got a melted DPF it's possible it could be melted if we've got pressure that's increased after it's had four regions or pressure that's increased after it's tried to be cleaned um, this is what I've been told the pressure has increased so he's he, he's monitored the, the pressure before it's had a clean and then monitored monitored the pressure straight after and um, it's 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 been higher so obviously he's got his own diagnostic tool that he uses so what we're gonna do here is I'll get in and show you some of the live data we'll get the DPF off the car we'll inspect it and possibly flush it on our machine and we will get back in and then we'll look at the live data again so once now once i'm finished here we'll get inside and i'll show you some of the live data i'll just show you the machine that we're going to use as well so in the back of our van here we have a dpf cleaning machine this one is from carbon clean and it is the dcs 16 model so we're going to Hopefully take the DPF and put it off off and put it on this machine here to back flush it. It's 2007 Volvo uh, D5 2.4. This brings back some good old memories. I had one of these cars maybe 15 years ago. I do like these cars. Right, so we've got a message on here that comes up. Let me just get the door closed. Soot filter full. Uh, the car is in reduced performance mode, engine lights on, so it's very, very slow going up hills. It is a manual, so it does make it a little bit easier to cope with the, with the loss of power, basically. Yeah, so it's 170,000 miles. If we look here, we've got around 120, hovering between 120 to 130 pressure on the DPF. This is at idle, so the car is just idling. And if we hold the revs up around 3,000 RPM, we get up around 600, 650. Well, 600, say. Now, a very important thing to do is to make sure that when they ignition is off I mean the engine is off and ignition on that the sensor does go out to zero so that means the sensor is sort of zero and out so you're not you can see some cars if they've got a bad sensor so you switch the engine off you look at your sensor here and this differential pressure could be anywhere between 10 20 50 even 100 with the engine off obviously we've got manometers we can remove the sensor put it on the pipe and check that the pressure matches what's what we're looking at on here but I don't see any, any reason why that's giving me the wrong data, it looks fine. What we're going to do now is we are going to remove the DPF and we'll take you through the process. So we've got a couple of little mounts up here. You see a few bolts that splits it from there, so relatively easy DPF to get off. It splits from here again. The bolts look nice and clean as well. And uh, so it doesn't look like it's going to be too much stress to get off. Alright, so I'm going to leave the dirty work to Brian down there, he's going to get that off. So just down the back over here you've got the pressure sensor, it's hidden just in there. Right there where my finger is pointing at. Now if you're ever looking at having a video of an on-car clean, I've got loads of them videos of this engine. Might be in an XC90 or, or whatever else, but it's all the same setup. So if you, if you do want to see one, one of these cars having the DPF cleaned on the car, I've got other videos on my channel, but this one, um, we're going to do it off the car, a little bit, little bit something different, and it's something diff a different type of video for us to look at. So yeah, it'll be, an, be a little, little bit interesting, a little bit different than the normal. I do normally just clean them on the on, on the on the car, but it really depends on what I'm looking at on live data and what I'm, what we're looking at in, in terms of 
a lot, a lot of it is down to what the customer tells me. Obviously, I can't figure it out myself, but it, if the customer has told me it's had a regen and the pressure increased afterwards, that saves me a lot of time trying to clean it on the car and test it and then see if the pressure comes down, which you, I know it probably is not gonna because of what I've been told. So it, it just makes the step a little bit quicker. We can just say, right, well, we might as well just get the DPF off and see, inspect it first, and then obviously try to reverse flush it. Reverse flushing, is a lot more effective than on car cleaning because if, if it's got high mileage and you've got ash in there reverse flushing it gets rid of the ash from the, fr from the front of the DPF ash will not flush in the exit direction it will only reverse flush back the way it came from that's it, that's the DPF off right, let's have a look in there left side over here I can see slight bits of soot getting past it's not too much of a concern it's not really black it's nice and clean really opposite side crack there is signs of cracking is that a sign of cracking there it looks like a little bit of cracking going on doesn't look like it doesn't look like it's melted yeah, definitely a little slight cracking over there there's a slight crack on it but it doesn't yeah I mean, I could probably do it a new DPF, but now we've got it off. I think what we'll do is we'll we'll give it a go on the flushing machine. One of the main things I wanted to verify is that we're not getting soot coming out the back of it, and we're not getting any oil. We don't have any oil residue in there because the customer for some reason said that he was concerned if it's using oil, but it's not going into the exhaust. Anyway, we can definitely verify that. What this also verifies is people say you shouldn't. Uh, every DPF is is dirty. This is a 20 year old car, 2007, so one of the earlier DPFs, and look how clean that is. So we're going to start it off at two, two and a half bar, just on the green line, and then we can move up to four bar after a couple of flushes. So we've got it now connected on the machine. Air comes in here, water comes in here and it blasts all of it out. So let's be interesting to see what comes out. Okay, we're gonna give it a, I don't know if we've got it switched on. Have we got it switched on? Let's see. Just some black soot at the moment. Right, we're gonna try it like this because with the DPF pointing directly down, the water is sort of flowing out before we can get a chance to actually give it a blast. So we want the DPF to sort of fill with water, then then we blast it out. Okay, let's try that. It might make a bit of a splash now. A little bit. I don't know if you can see down there, we've got ash, grey soot. Doesn't look too bad. Got some splash of ash there, you see that? See that ash? It's like sand. Okay. See, it's the water is sort of. Uh, get the camera in there, but the water is like a grey colour, sand, sand, sand in it. But it looks like a sandy texture, if you, if you know what I mean. It's it's obviously ash. Definitely not your average uh, stuff that you see coming out of a DPF. I don't know if you can see it in there, but it's like a milky colour water. Pure whitey grey. But obviously this has had a clean. It has, has, had, had, has had an on-car clean, but it's also had forced regeneration. So we're not really going to be getting any soot come out. It's mainly just ash. Go on. You see that? It sort of looks like sand. And get a close up of that. Right, there you go, it looks when you get a torch down there. It's, yeah, it is kind of red, but yeah, like a white tint to it. So we are just repeating this process maybe sort of 10 times. Okay, now that's all flushed out, we've done at least a dozen times there. I'm just going to get it now and fit it back onto the car. You can see all of the ash that came out there, that sort of stuff. Right, let's have a little look inside after the clean. That looks like brand new. 
and the entry side you can see the ash that was coming out look at that ash that's got, that was coming out there still a little bit there in there that we should have but yeah you can see all of the loose ash that was coming out now my lovely assistant Brian is going to get that refitted back on luckily it's a nice and easy DPF to get off I wish all cars had serviceable DPFs like that nice uh, nice easy fitment didn't they make cars so simple back then these older type cars they just made them so so simple when you look back now they were so easy to work on wish they made new cars like this like just DPFs underneath a couple of bolts you take it off you can service it and uh, you know have it off and, and back on the car in an hour hour and a half Tell you what I've also noticed with these older cars is how much more reliable they were and how much this system actually worked. Like what this is, I think this is just a Euro four, maybe Euro like it's all seven. So Euro five didn't come out till uh, as far as I can remember around 2010, 2011, maybe even 2012 was it something like that. Anyway, but this DPF on this car has worked all of that time. It's this guy's had this car for many years, and it's you know it's 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 only now it's got to 170,000 and it's 20 years old or something that uh, it's um it's now given an issue just because it's there's not even an issue with the DBF it's just full of ash it's literally full because it's done so much driving so maybe a lot of idling a lot of town driving and and um, yeah it, it's worked all that time and now I'm seeing cars that are you know a year old needing a new DPF because it's cracked. Look at this car, it's got a DPF that's 20 odd years old and it's absolutely fine. Well I hope it's fine. Let's let's we'll see once we confirm the pressure now after it's been cleaned we're, we're gonna see how, how the DPF has 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 taken to uh to the clean. Okay it's all fitted back on the car. We're idling now at three four millibars of pressure. Look at that, absolutely perfect. We're gonna hold the revs up to three thousand RPM. So there's the engine speed at the top. 3,000, there we go, 46 millibars of pressure, 44, we've literally only just fitted it, the engine's been running less than a minute, so it is absolutely perfect, brand, that EPF is like brand new now, uh, it's even hovering, starting to hover between 2 to 3 millibars now, and just for record for the video, these are the fault codes that we have. I'll try and put all of these in the video description so if you're looking for these fault codes that you're able to find the video. So it's all just basically particle filter trap is blocked, particle trap, particle pressure sensor, it's faulty signal, all of that. Now obviously as we can see as I've shown on the live, live data the pressure sensor is not faulty. We haven't got any faulty sensors, all we had is just a blockage of ash within the DPF. Okay first we're going to try and erase the fault code, I can't remember on these, please wait a half a minute and then check the DCCs. I can't remember if you need to do like a, uh, we shouldn't have to do a DPF reset, we'll know in a minute. Okay the engine is running now, see we've got the average miles per gallon up now, we haven't got that fault there anymore. But it is an absolutely perfect, I love getting a good result from stuff like this, no DTCs are now set in the ECU. And obviously what we always do is just go back and then do a reread just to confirm that the fault codes have gone. So we've just had it on a little test drive there and I will say uh, these cars I do love the sound of the engine. You probably can't hear that on the video but it sounds beautiful. And then obviously after the test drive a rescan of the codes. Just having a quick check of the live data there we can see it's actually started doing its own regen just now. We are stationary, we've got the revs up at just under 3000 RPM. Now most cars have a set uh, amount of soot which is calculated in grams that when they want to do a regen. Unfortunately on this car I can't seem to find that value anywhere but now that we've reset it it's trying to do its own regen. Yeah, so what would have been happening with this car is it would have been regenerating every sort of maybe 20 miles or 50 miles trying to get that pressure down and um, that's why after we've cleaned it now we've taken our test drive it's immediately decided to do its own regen. So that's it, all finished, Volvo XC70. See you in the next video.